For the time being anyway, this obsession, if we can call it that with inflation, has driven these insurance cuts and helped once again to reflate financial assets. 2019 was an extraordinary year for investors. How did you do? Not as well as I would like. I just got into double digits. Uh, last week I wouldn't even been able to say that. I'm just too conservative in my old age. I was, I was well positioned but very timidly. I'll leave it at that. Why, why are you timid? You got yeah. nothing to lose. <laughs> I have a lot to lose. That's, that's one of the reasons I'm timid. I don't know, when I was competing and managing other people's money, I just, I'm a very competitive person and I felt the compulsion to take risks. I'm still a competitive person, but it's either that or something about my age, I don't trust myself, or the last year in particular, I've just never trusted um, this administration um, not to do something that would preclude me from taking positions that I just felt were safe and secure and all in risk. And I think, unfortunately, a lot of people probably felt the same way. As you know, people have actually sold equities and put them into bonds this year. I didn't do that. I was just timid about what I did do. But this administration, with wondering about where the hell the next bomb is coming from just doesn't allow me to take some of the positions I've taken historically where I just thought it was a one-way bet. To me, this was always binary and a two-way bet. It's not just policy uncertainty, it's something, how would you, what would you call it? Policy uncertainty is a, 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 is a great term. Um, one of the reasons I'm pretty sanguine right now is I think we're close enough to the election and at least we can breathe for a few months that I think I don't expect any dramatic policy that can overwhelm the favorable backdrop of monetary stimulus in a decent economy. It's awfully hard of course to predict when the next downturn is going to come. Do you have any idea Stan, particularly as someone who's made more money in bear markets than in bull markets, what will trigger it? Yeah, if, if there's a political event, change of leadership in the White House that goes to some of the anti-capitalists, I would think that would definitely trigger a bear market. Whether it would permanently end the bull market, I don't know, but that would trigger it. The other thing that would obviously trigger it is if by the end of this year, we started to get enough inflation that the Fed started tightening. And then of course the other thing is if we had a credit event. And if you look at the credit markets, it's very obvious that you got a really lot of bad apples out there that are not being exposed because the interest costs are so low. By the way, one of them being the US government. Um, we're running a trillion dollar deficit, why? because we can. In fact, a lot of these new professor geniuses think this is just a free lunch. But I would think it's one of those three events. A, political, B, change in Fed policy because, you know, who knows when inflation turns? You can come up with a theory why it would turn. I kind of believe the secular forces will hold it down, but I've been wrong before and I'll be wrong in, in the future. And then the third one is, and this is more what happened in 07, 08, the, the bubble just collapses on itself because things have just gotten so ridiculous. I don't think we're anywhere near there, but I've been wrong before. And, you know, these things seem to happen after elections.